So in architecture, when you're talking about facade embellishment, thin walls are definitely not out of the questions. So thin walls can be used as aesthetic elements. They can be used for facade embellishment and making your facade very rich in beauty. They like, can also be used as functional elements. They can even be used as sun shading devices. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create thin walls in a way that you could replicate the thin walls in different parts of the project without much stress. So it's just going to make things much easier for you. So if you haven't done so, make sure you hit the like button also subscribe to our channel because we have a lot of playlist of good contents that could help you improve your software progress and even improve your career in the aec industry and without any further ado we're going to jump into the main content at hand so we're going to start we're going to be just this one of my favorite projects so i'm going to be creating the thin wall system inside here or rather the cutting wall system in front of thin walls just give you a bit of spoilers so the first thing to do is we're just going to separate our cutting wall family we want to use to create the thin wall system so to do that we are going to go to walls under walls we are just going to select the regular cutting wall and we are just going to duplicate it so once i've selected the regular cutting wall here i'm just going to click on edit type i'm going to click on duplicate and i'm just going to name this 01 thin walls all right so once we have done this i'm just going to click ok and we are going to suspend it for now now we have created this thin wall farm so i'm just going to click on escape so the next thing we are going to do is we are going to be creating some cutting wall panel system so to do that we are just going to go to file under file we are going to go to new under new we are going to go to family under family instead of english imperial i don't work in a part of the world where they use the imperial system so i'm going to be selecting english metric so i'm just going to go back and i'm going to click on this english then i'm just going to go to metric cutting wall panel to create my panel so i'm just going to click on ok so to create the panel we want to use we're going to be using sweep but before we do that we're just going to edit some of these reference planes so i'm just going to click on one of these since the dimensions are set in equal i'm just going to change this to 75 and the other one is going to change to 75 millimeter as well so once i've done this i'm going to go to create i'm going to go to sweep so i'm going to be using catch parts so i'm just going to draw a part here to this point then i'm going to click escape so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on al on my keyboard and i'm going to click on this reference plane here and i'm going to select this line we have just drawn and i'm going to lock it in place so now i've done this i'm just going to click on finish then i'm going to click on edit profile and they are going to give me option of the view to edit the profile so i'm going to go to open 3d view so what i'm going to be doing now is i'm just going to use this 3d gizmo here and rotate it to the right side because i drew it on the front plane so i'm going to be editing it on this right side one thing we should take cognizance of before sketching this we are going to take cognizance of the height of this panel because in revit once we have assigned the height to this we are going to be placing the cutting walls in multiples of that height in the case of this video i'm going to be using 1.5 and another thing we are going to be doing is that we are going to sketch the profile of these panels in a way that if the thing that are stacked on top of each other is still going to flow very well so for instance if we just select any random shape like maybe like this and we just stack it on top of each other it's going to look inconsistent so we're going to carefully draw a good shape that is going to be continuous if multiplied all right so i'm going to start from drawing a profile line here up to 150 then i'm also going to draw one here up to 150 then i'm just going to draw an extra line here for future reference and i'm just going to separate the line from this point so now that i've done this i'm just going to click on this line here and i'm going to mirror it and i'm just going to mirror it for now then i'm going to click on this arc line and i'm just going to select the center point here select the center point here then arc it to this point then once i've done that i'm just going to trim this and i could delete this extra line i mirrored before so now i'm going to select this line here and i'm not going to mirror it and copy it to this point here so after i've done this i'm just going to use this fillet arc and i'm just going to smooth here select these two lines and just try and smoothen it so i don't know for some reason it just extends after i do this but there's no problem we're going to select all these lines we're just going to click on this move tool and we're going to drag it back to place so once we have done this we're just going to delete this so now before we click on finish we're going to assign a material so i'm going to go under this material tab here i'm going to right click i'm going to duplicate then i'm going to name this 01 timber so after i've done this i'm just going to click on this tab here to assign a new material and the material editor i'm going to go under appearance i'm going to go under wood i'm going to select the light brown wooden material then i'm going to click apply and i'm going to click ok so now and i've done this um i think we're almost done i'm going to click on finish and click on finish so now if you change this to fine and if you change this to shader they are going to see our 
wooden material here okay so we have a problem it's looking translucent so i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to edit the material so what i'm going to make sure is i'm going to go under this graphics i'm going to make sure i check this use render appearance i'm going to click apply and i'm going to click ok so you can see now it's looking much smoother so now we have created this we're going to go to this elevation view to just adjust some things before we save it and load it into our project so i'm going to click on al that is a shortcut for our line al then i'm just going to select this bottom reference plane and i'm going to select the bottom of this our model and lock it in place i'm also going to do something similar for this top one i'm going to select it i'm going to click on move and i'm going to move it down to exactly the top point here then i'm going to click on al on my keyboard i'm going to align this and select the top of this our model and lock it in place so now this is done i could go to our 3d is looking all good then i could click on ctrl s to save it then i'm going to save it as fin main i'm going to override this former one i created and save it so if you haven't saved it before you are clear, you could give it the name you want and save it then i'm going to click on load into project and it's going to load into our project so now we have done this we are going to go to this ngl now and remember what i told you about taking cognizance of the height of those panels so we're going to be creating the cutting wall panel we named fin wall in multiples of 1.5 which is the height of the panels so we're going to be making the cutting wall as high as 4.5 so it's going to fit in well so i'm going to go to walls under this wall you can see we have already selected this our cutting wall fin wall so i'm just going to reset some of these constraints i'm going to change this base offset to zero i'm going to change this top offset to unconnected so we are going to get our 4.5 then i'm now going to change this to 4.5 so it's going to be exactly 4.5 so i'm going to click on edit type i'm now going to go to this vertical grid and i'm going to change this to fixed distance from none i'm also going to change this to fixed distance so i'm going to be changing the vertical grid to 225 so it's just a small spacing so the spacing will be 75 millimeter in between then i'm going to change the spacing to this spacing to one this horizontal spacing to 1.5 then i'm going to go to this cutting wall panel which is very important then i'm just going to change it to fin you are going to see the fin main and i'm going to select it then i'm going to click apply and i'm going to click ok then let's just draw our cutting wall family all right so if we go to 3d now we are going to see what we've done so as you can see now you can see the panels although we have an issue since they were created as panels there is no spacing in between them and we want some spacing in between them so it's just looking like a tick mask so what we are going to do is we are going to click on this cutting wall then we are going to click on edit type so what we are going to be doing is we are going to add in some invisible munions so i'm just going to change this interior munions i'm just going to pick any munion let me just use this munion main i used in the project before and i'm just going to select this munion main for everything so once i've done this i'm just going to click apply and okay so it's going to apply i'm going to be seeing the munions but this is weird so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on escape i'm going to click on tab to select one of these munions here click on tab once i've selected it i'm just going to unpin it here then i'm going to click on edit type i'm going to click on duplicate and i'm going to rename this as invisible munion so once i've renamed this let me just correct the spelling well i'm going to click ok then i'm done going to change the material of this munion i'm going to change the width on one side to 37.5 so if you join both of them together it's going to form 75 then i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to also paste it here as well then i'm going to assign a new material to this i'm going to be assigning the air material so which is a very transparent material so it's basically invisible so i'm just going to click on air to search for it so air material comes with any default revit file you open so let's just select it so now i've selected it i can see the air here i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click apply all right so i'm just going to click on apply i'm going to click ok so what i'm going to do now now you can see that this munion is now invisible so what i'm going to do i'm just going to select this i'm going to click on edit type then i'm going to be changing all these munions to the invisible munion so now that is done i'm just going to click on apply and i'm going to click ok so as you can see now you can see how good this is looking you can see how it has created this very nice seemingly parametric thing wall so we can even use it and we are going to draw an arc so if i go to this ngl and i go to click on architecture and i click on wall again then i'm just going to click on this arc too then i'm just going to draw a perfect arc you are going to see how it's still going to form very well so it's taking time because it's heavy and it's still all nice so i'm just going to 
you can see how good this is looking you can see the fin walls which is looking very nice so what i'm going to do now is i could just okay ctrl z i could just go to this cutting wall here i could click on it i could go to some of these cutting wall i've placed in this project before once i click on it i could just make sure that okay the height already is already three meter so i could just click on this drop down and i could just change it to the fin walls so it's going to delete some panels and it's going to show me some things but it's going to form so as you can see you can see how nicely it's formed so you can see the fin wall is looking nice yes it's not perfect yet although with some little editing here and there i think we are going to get it exactly where we want it to be i think this brings us to the end of the video so you can see how we just seemingly created this nice parametric fin walls it can be used in projects it can be helpful aesthetically functionally for shading devices to just making nice scenery and so if this video was helpful don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to our channel for more content like this really subscribe i really want to appreciate for the support so far we have gotten to 5k but we can still do much more so we have a playlist of revit videos if you want to master revit i have many full course on my revit playlist i also have some d5 courses if you want to learn how to render using d5 render if you have a good system i want to use it you can check that out as well so with that out of the way i'm going to wish you good luck till the next video thank you very much